Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. You find us here on the next morning, the morning after the night before. We are packing up a wet camp. Had a bit of rain overnight, not a lot, don't think. Heard the rain. We were here on the grass. There's our dints. And there's all our washing on the line. Everything in my swag got fairly wet. A little bit of a problem there with that one. But uh, Wendy's was dry, so that's good. But uh, mine, not so good. And we had a, a good night's sleep, or I did. Did you have a good night's sleep, dear? Yeah, I had a good night's sleep. Tossed and turned a bit, but... No. We've dried the bikes off a bit here. So we'll give that uh, stuff on the, on the fence an hour or so to dry. Uh, we've got plenty of time up our sleeve. Uh, as I said, mine was the worst. Everything down beside the mattress got wet. Didn't realise it through the night. I mean, I felt dry, there was no problem, but uh, everything seeped through the canvas, or the water seeped through the canvas and got everything wet along the, both sides. So there is a problem with that, um, with that swag. But Wendy's was good. That was very good. All right, folks, we'll have a bit of a, a look around the district of Dorigo, up and over the showground, out to the west. Some really pretty farming country out here. Reminds me of North Queensland up on the Atherton Tablelands, Miller Miller, all up through there. Okay, looking a bit north, and there's all these train carriages down there. It's just a... Uh, it was going to be a museum, I believe, or something along those lines, but it never really happened. You can't get to them. Now we're spinning around now to the main part or the, the, the city centre of Dorigo, which is right there. That's where the pub was. Good meal. Highly recommend it. Looking out to the east, up that hill and over that ridge is the, uh, the ocean. And sort of looking to the south, and a bit of a new... Uh, development down there and looking back down on the showgrounds we've got Rebel the Riker there that little dot in front of the building and then these uh, train carriages have it have a go at them there's got to be a oh don't know how many all right folks we're leaving the showgrounds we're gonna head um, away from Dorigo a different way that we came in we came up through Bellingen up through Thora up the uh, waterfall what's it called waterfall way yeah, came up the Waterfall Way, but we're going to go down another road which takes us to Caramba. Part of that road's dirt. So, um, very scenic and had a few technical difficulties here on this recording. Uh, that's another way of saying I stuffed up the audio. I apologise. And I don't know what I did wrong, but I couldn't get any sound out of this bit. So, we're heading into Dorigo, we're going to head out past Dangar Falls, we didn't stop in there, and head down to Karamba. Now, it's bitumen for the first third, and the middle third is dirt, and that's running down the range, and then from Yulong on, it's bitumen again, running right down into Caramba, so it's a really good downhill run, very pretty countryside. Here we're going through the uh, the main street of Dorigo. Um, there's the pub, good meal, and right there on on the right hand side, that corner, just where Wendy is, that's where that um, antiques place is that's always perpetually closed. We've only ever struck it once open. Uh, Wendy will talk about that a bit later too. Anyways, we'll get out of Dorigo. We'll lose a little bit of footage because technical difficulties. In other words, I stuffed up. Something went wrong. We don't know what we're doing, but uh, mm, sorry about that. All right, we'll catch us up down the road a little bit. Um, well, because we, we lost everything that I've just said in the last half hour, um, 
I was babbling on to you all about a, how nice it is through here and I said, look at that tree and I looked up at the tree and I looked down and there right in front of me was a massive pothole full of water and I couldn't avoid it. That's what I get from looking up at the tree and um, I copped it. I copped all that dirty, muddy water. Not that bad. It's dirty and muddy. Oh. And my helmet copped it, my visor, which fortunately was down. I've got a chamois, I'll fix that. So... I've got to do it all again. Um, sadly, you've missed a, a, <clears throat> a nice part of the ride. But we'll start again from here. So we're heading down from Dorigo down to Caramba. We're currently on dirt road. Um, potholes, patchy, water. yes, potholes full of water. Patchy, pretty, very, very pretty. But I was telling you all sorts of things about the Dorigo pub, about, oh, certain things in Dorigo. Well, I'll babble on about it again. It might be of interest to some of you, it might not, but um, and I have to try and stay close to Tom also because he has the camera. So don't go too fast. No. Well, here we go again. For some reason or other, the camera wasn't recording. And I had told you some very interesting things, which I'll try and tell again. whilst dodging all of these things on the road. <clears throat> Got a very wet leg. So, what was I saying? I was saying um, about Dorigo. Um, we chose to stay in the, at the showground uh, because when we were coming back from Tinga on the trip that we recorded for you, um, we stayed, we weren't swagging it then. We went to the Dorigo Caravan Park and we stayed in a cabin and honestly it was $140 and it was disgraceful for $140. For $70 you'd go, oh well, yeah, that's what you expect for 70. It was just disgraceful and um, Looking back at some of the reviews, some are good, but that may be for the people in caravans, but this particular cabin, honestly, never again. So we decided to go for the showground. And sure, the, gra the grass was a bit long, but if, if you're in a self-contained caravan, there's, it's not a problem. The showers were clean enough. You do have to put a dollar in to get four minutes of hot water, but the water was hot. The pressure was good. So there's... Um, there was no problem. The only, I, I guess the only problem for us was the fact that, you know, we got a bit of rain and unfortunately Tom's swag is not as good as mine in the sense that it, it's not built up enough at the sides with the waterproof material. So what he had stored down beside his mattress um, got wet. I don't I'd, I wouldn't like to be in either of them in a big storm, I must admit. And we went to the Dorigo pub last night and for anyone passing through Dorigo, I highly recommend for a meal. It was excellent food, beautifully done. And I was, because we walked, I was able to have a lovely alcoholic ginger beer drink, which went down well. And it is the only working pub now in Dorigo. And there was another one. Now there's a, um, a man, we'll just call him the man. In Dorigo, there is a massive big shop that has um, old wares in it. And you know, what, like a, a vintage shop, I guess you could call it. And it's huge. And every time in the past we'd go there, it was never open. 
and it's something that you really would love to go through you might find something you know nice in there and nut nah, was never ever open and this one particular time um, we were there and it was many years ago I think we were with some friends it was well before biking um, and a woman was trying to coordinate everything and, and pack everything and I think she was just so overwhelmed I think she had a son there and uh, I think the story was that the man that owned it uh, he'd lost interest and so he just lets it sit there I think he lives in Sydney and I think she was going to try and sell everything off well when we went back the next time it's still there years and years later and he doesn't do anything with it sadly and it's never opened it's massive it's full of there'd be so much money in invested in there um, and it sits there and then I heard it was the same man I've heard this from two people now it was that same man that decided to buy the the second pub in Dorigo and closed it down and does nothing with it <laughs> um, he's obviously got an agenda we're stopping here and having a look at at some little falls it's, it's so pretty Yeah, so here's a, a pub that once was probably busy with men and women having their drinks after work and on weekends and meals, etc. And now sits there probably going to rack and ruin just like his, his shop. So um, not sure about the story on that one, on that man. Why would you buy the pub and then decide to do nothing with it so, and also in Dorigo when we were there a while back oh there's a man popped out of the bushes oh there he is now I am just going to negotiate my way through these potholes um, there's a rooster and his name's Rodney and he he sort of takes possession of the main street and he wanders in and out of the shops and um, and his name's Rodney and everyone loves him and we think he he had a roosting place at night time but yeah he was very traffic aware not that there's a lot of traffic in the main street but he he knew the ins and outs and it was lovely to see Rodney the rooster wandering through the main street of Dorigo and he'd pop into shops and then lo and behold there was a story on oh, like a, a current affairs show or something like that that they didn't know what was going to happen because some people had complained about Rodney Now he didn't peck anyone so I really don't know why they were complaining I suppose they thought that uh, roosters shouldn't be wandering into shops um, so I haven't seen Rodney again and I don't I haven't really found out uh, if he's still in existence I hope he is as, as would the locals the other thing that I was saying I think it was about rebel um, how I don't have a steering damper dampener I don't know how to say that I've forgotten already I notice a lot of people have them now my rebel I bought it as is I didn't know anything about them um, gosh look at this mud <laughs> stove it back here I never had the urge to to get one because I feel as though I'm fine with the steering the way it is Ooh. Ooh. Check it out. Look, I'd be shitting myself if I was on the back of the bike right now. I can tell you, hence why I never go on two wheels. Um, yeah, so I don't have one. 
whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, but I feel as though I can manage without it. What I don't know doesn't hurt me. And if I do get a rally, they'll have that sort of stuff anyway. So I don't intend to, to have one put on. Damper, is that it? A steering damper. Dampener. Sometimes I can be so dumb. They make, how you going? Daisy. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh dear, they didn't tell us about this, did they? Oh no. Old Rebel's gonna have a bit of a slosh here. You can't see this yet because the camera's on me, but we have a grader. We have mud. We have an edge of the road. <laughs> How you going? Oh, now we have the roller. How you going? And we have trucks. And we have slosh. <laughs> it's all good fun, isn't it? Look at the mud coming out of this. Tom will be loving this. He'll think this is in his element now. Be loving it. This is why I want to rally. <laughs> so tempted to just give it something and then see what it does but no, I don't think I'm experienced enough to be doing stuff like that. It's all part of the experience isn't it? You want to go off road you've got to deal with it. I'd just love to know if I just give it a little bit if I have a big slide. It's nice um, riding through this um, with the canopy, the trees, and it's nice and cool, you just don't feel hot. I think it'd be very cold in the middle of winter, but um, yeah, but you, wouldn't, you wouldn't come through in the middle of winter unless you were very rugged up, I suppose, but you know, you get glimpses of sun come through, and, and that's nice, and then you're back, but it's, you don't, you don't feel hot and flustered and you can concentrate. I know taking this little one up to um, to the Atherton Tablelands, up to Herberton, is probably a big thing. Um, ideally it would be great to have the 900 for that, but that's, we, we want to go around about April, late March, April maybe, all going well. And um, I'm not allowed to upgrade until September. And in those months, it's just getting a bit too warm to go, um, to go up there. So I think um, Rebel's perfectly capable of it, of doing it. As long as I'm perfectly capable of riding it correctly and and being careful and sensible, um, I think we'll be fine. 
probably wouldn't do it on my own just yet I mean I would ride a, a trip on my own and just stay in motels and hotels or in pubs if I was on my own um, shorter trips maybe but no I think I think it's always best to have someone with you and someone that has the know how that Tom has you get into trouble he usually knows how to get out of it it's not the road that you take after lots and lots and lots and lots of rain the good thing about it is there's no traffic apart from the roadworks there's just no traffic the one thing I don't like about camping so to speak um, are the flies. I'm a bit of a princess when it comes to things like that. I just hate the flies hanging around. And I know that if we go out um, west and on the way up going, uh, we're going to cop that. So I do have one of those hats with the, the netting for the face, but oh, you know, even there in Dorigo, I had a few settling and hanging around. It, it drives you mad. Yeah, I'm a real princess when it comes to to flies. Yes. Yes. We went out uh, years ago in the caravan years ago five maybe um, I can't think of the name of the place it's where the tree of knowledge is in Queensland and it uh, was on the way up north to Cairns at the time um, when our eldest daughter was living there um, Bar uh, Bar Alden, I think it was Bar Alden, and we did not go to Longreach and the flies were horrific oh. and many many years ago 10, 11, 12 years uh, 2012 we had a motorhome when we had left before I got the cancer and we went out to Cuba Pedy there's a place out there called the Breakaways and oh you had to have a net on your head then i tell you it was just and they were tiny i mean they could get into the corner of your eyes and in your mouth and ah oh, horrid so we're on bitumen again which is a good thing there's a nice house two nice houses one's a bit older that one there oh, this one's a new one and what a lovely outlook just to have that and look over at the greenery that looks like it could be a shouse maybe going up Tom giving all the workmen a wave We're not professionals at this, are we? But well, we do try. But it was never our intention to be professionals. It was just the intention to um, to show you where we're going and our adventures and the bikes. Because we like to share. We're very sharing and caring people. Tom loves to go fast through here <laughs> and he'd be thinking that I should be keeping up with him 
which I can, but oh, it can be hard work. Well, I suppose it's not fast, is it? 40 to 50, 50 to 60. But on the bends sometimes, for me, that's fast. This is a place called Yulong, which I think is really nice. I don't know too much about it. I know we've stayed here in the van for a night. And that's the village of Yulong back there. It's pretty down there, isn't it? Another place that's very hot though, it's in a sort of a valley there, cold in the winter. <laughs> Beautiful place to live though. I think also just getting back to the trip up, um, how great it would be to, I don't think we will because I can't think of anywhere off the top of my head because we have travelled up north a few times because we, when we're in the van we free camp a lot because we have everything that we need. We, it's only a tiny van now, um, but we have an outdoor shower set up, which works wonderfully. Um, we have a portable flushing toilet, which works wonderfully. Um, and so free camping is fantastic in the van. And the only thing we were thinking is when we... I like having a daily shower, call me a princess, but most of us do, most of us women do. Um, and so does Tom. And so I want to be where there's shower facilities. Now we can't carry our own shower on the bikes. Um, but we have gone out to Lilydale, Lilydale sorry, or Kangi, out near home, which we may, I think, have shown you on past videos. And it's been warm enough to bath in the river. Um, we didn't even set up our shower, I don't think, because we bathed in the river. And that was fantastic. And wouldn't it be great to find somewhere that it was warm enough and you were set up somewhere by a stream or as long as it wasn't uh, dirty water, um, flowing water is lovely. Um, so, but I don't think we're going to find anywhere because ideally, you know, we could free camp on the way here and there if we could find um, a babbling brook but I don't think that's going to be the case but it would be nice I think we'd be safe I suppose I should carry a baseball bat but if someone wants to come and attack us I don't know that a baseball bat's going to be of much help but if there's other campers around just carry a little bit of food a freeze-dried meal or something we've got a, a little um, like a little primus that we can heat things on carry enough water but no I wouldn't be opposed to doing that especially on a a starry night out in the middle of somewhere with the water flowing and looking up from your swag out at the stars. I guess a lot of bikers take this road for the for the road, not for the view. On weekends, a lot of serious bikers. They take it for the road but not for the actual what's around. I tell you it's a real test on the arms. Plus the fingers, I have arthritis in my fingers. It puts them to the test. It hurts a bit sometimes. Sometimes it's really bad and quite painful. 
um, and other times it's fine. Now it says the speed through here is 80. There is no way in the world that I can do 80 through here. I just can't. I probably never will be able to. I mean it's limited to 80, it's not, you don't have to do 80, but um, that's why I prefer ride on a weekday when it's quiet, so I'm not holding anyone up. I don't think I'd even do 80 in the car through there. I think I said it yesterday, but just a reminder again, thank you for subscribing and liking. and the lovely comments that I receive and um, you know who you are that always leaves a great comment but we're happy to have you all on board and we appreciate the fact that you take time to sit down and watch I don't know whether you ever learn anything from me <laughs> maybe from Tom I'm sure our little Baxter appreciates you watching him as well. Looking forward to seeing him today. Taking him home. As high maintenance as he is, it will be a sad day when, um, when that time comes with his heart because he's a very high maintenance dog. He does seem to have um, some strange issues. But he's ours and we love him. It's nearly, gosh, I think it's a couple of days, one year since we had to have our other little, little rescue dog put down. Her name was Abby, and she was so sweet. Um, we don't really know how old she was. But, you know, she developed um, problems and they just got so bad that we knew the time had come. I miss her little face. But she was high maintenance too. Gosh, it's a long way down this mountain. Certainly warming up now. And down we... Down we are. Look at that cough. Swingers convention. Oh, swingers convention. I know the camera wouldn't have picked that up, but... That's what it said. It said there was a Coffs, the Coffs Harbour Swingers Convention. I don't think I'll be attending. Tom would probably want to go. <laughs> no, I'm joking. There's a winery there, Two Tails Wines of Cock. We're coming into Nana Glen. Unusual name, Nana Glen. But it's a lovely little place. It has a great cafe. I think it's called the Idle Inn. And I think Tom's planning on idling in. Oh, I might be closed. No, it's definitely. No, it's closed. Closed for a staff break. Well, there you go. 